thing is when you're dieting, same thing with entrepreneurship. When you're building something you're obsessed about, whether it's your physique or your business, you're thinking about it all the time. And so when you do something for a month or two, it's mentally exhausting and it feels like you've been putting so much effort towards it. And you have, it just takes longer than most people think. Building a real estate career, building a business, building a physique. But again, if you get the blueprint with massive action, consistency and time, that's again, when it comes back to, it's impossible to fail. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio, folks. As always, got a real treat for you. Mr. Rob Stein in the house. Let's go. Otherwise known as Mr. Shine. <laughs> is it thank Mr. You, Clean? No, Mr. Clean. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dude, you literally look like Mr. Clean. If people are listening <laughs> to this, you got to go to the YouTube channel right now. Go to bradlee.tv look for this episode and watch it with video because i'm telling you dude <laughs> literally like if i were going to hire a lookalike yeah. you're it yeah that's not the first time i've heard that <laughs> it's crazy like as soon as i looked over i'm like wait a minute why does he look so familiar <laughs> yeah <laughs> you've seen me for years <laughs> dude so so actually rob is uh, like a real estate mogul yeah in a way yeah and now obviously out there rocking and rolling still even in this industry i mean yeah. uh, the climate absolutely it's still happening yep so how's the market right now man the market is doing what the market always does it fluctuates and anyone who's been in the industry long enough will tell you market fluctu uh, fluctuations are totally normal and the agents that are going to continue getting paid continue thriving are the ones that know how to flex and operate in an ever-changing market when the market went to a what a good what a good answer let's go <laughs> you know when the Can't market stump rob right? that was a good one when the market changed to like this crazy unsustainable tidal wave of a seller's market due to shortage of inventory and record low free money right everyone wants to buy when interest rates are like two percent then i went from about a 50 50 balance of sellers and buyers to i need to have a listing based business now because it's too hard working with buyers i'm running around i'm showing properties i'm making offers i made offers for seventy thousand over asking told we weren't even in the top five so it was it was and we were commission only so i moved to a listing based business and that was fantastic and i climbed into the top five percent of agents in that time then about this time that's last called, year that's called being smart and making an adjustment that's right because it's happening so i can either get on board or not right and then about a year ago this time early may the market shifted again interest rates almost doubled in just a short amount of time so i said okay now it's time to work with buyers again and boom we were able to work with first-time home buyers i made that shift right away uh i have you know, three closings tomorrow. I have my team managing them. I'm not there just tomorrow alone. And so it's always a good market if you know how to prospect and how to flex. What's flex? Uh, just how to, how to be flexible. I should say how to be flexible, right? Flex in terms of being flexible, but flex and also, I mean, I'm a former professional bodybuilder. So flexing, you're flexing every muscle in your body. It's literally one of the hardest things you can do, but it's relentless. It's absolutely relentless. I think relentless. that's why this arm looks better than this arm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like when someone says flex, I'll right. go, I'll, you know, I'll do this. There you go. And then, and when I look in the mirror, it's like, okay, I can see that one mm -hmm. more than I can see that one. And it's probably because like, don't you see? A little bit, like a little, little more peak you, in the right. Yeah. You can see this a little one more better peak than in you the can right. see this one. Yeah. A, I'm out of shape, but B, because I think I flex with this one. That's probably so it. So believe it or not, this one's more developed because yeah. of the flex. Yeah. So so flex in terms of being flexible, but flex and also you have to continuously be relentless. So when you are flexible, you can't slow down, right? So so as the market is shifting, I'm not going to say, okay, I'm going to dial back. I'm going to reevaluate. I'm going to slow down and form a new strategy. No, I'm going to continue sprinting, but I'm going to change instantly i'm not going to stop prospecting i'm not going to stop any of my systems i'm just going to make that change at lightning speed so my business doesn't slow down so you have to be able to change with an ever-changing market but you also need to be able to continue moving quickly to fill your short and medium and long-term pipeline yeah and before i forget you can follow rob where do you follow rob uh, robstein.tv robstein.tv very simple s-t-i-n uh, s-t-e-i-n e-i-n yeah what did i say s-t-i-n Rob Stin. S C E I N. I meant the E. There you go. Dude, I'm starting to think maybe I'm going crazy or or dementia or some shit. Yeah. Well, you asked me that question three times. I know, but sometimes <laughs> in my head, dude, 
I sit there and try to think of a word that, like, I know the word is just not yeah. coming. You've I'm got like, too much genius floating around in there, bro. I, it's just... I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's not some early onset bullshit. Yeah. But anyway, 10 years from now, I'll be like, nah, not be able to say that. I'll be like, dude, he, he called it in freaking 10 years ago. But Stein, S T E I N, which yeah. I've seen a thousand times. I don't know why I put S T I N. Yeah. That's Stin. Yeah. But anyway, um, website. Uh, so it's robstein.tv. You can also follow me on Instagram at robstein underscore impossible to fail. And impossible to fail is the name of my first book I have coming out shortly as well. When's that book come out? Uh, it's going to be coming out probably in about three months. We're just in final editing stages. Cover design is done. Talking to a few publishers and should be out by quarter three. What's it, what's it about? Impossible to fail. So I, I own multiple businesses. My first business. Now, I used to be a underpaid, overworked middle school teacher. I, uh, with a master's degree in education, my first business was in the music composition and publishing space. And I built that up to about a quarter million dollars a year and was able to quit teaching. A few years later, I got my real estate license, became a top 5% agent in the nation, started a team, opened an independent brokerage, became top 5% of brokerage owners. Now I'm one of the leading real estate educators and mindset coaches in North America. So when I was talking to my marketing team about the book, cause I knew I wanted to write a book. The question they asked me was, how have I been able to do so many things that are seemingly unrelated at a high level, music, real estate, coaching. And I had said something along the lines of, I've always just wanted to structure it that it's literally impossible to fail. And they said, oh, let's, let's drill down on that a little more. And ultimately, and I know you talk about this all the time, and we talked about this extensively when we met at Nashville, the impossible to fail framework is simple. Number one, you have a goal. The first thing you have to do is get the blueprint. You have to find someone that has done exactly what you're trying to do, number one, and has a successful track record of teaching others. That's very important. And that's on my radar as an educator because I'm sure we've all had bad teachers. I mean, you've, you've, you've probably in your life had a bad teacher. I've probably right? been one. <laughs> right? So, so I think achieving success at something doesn't necessarily make you qualified to teach others how to do it. So you find someone that has a great track record themselves and has a successful track record of teaching others. Now- what you're doing there is you're engaging in the fastest path to success. And for some reason, you know, when people go to college, they go to college to develop a skill set. Here's this thing I want to do. I want to have a career at this. I don't know how to do it. So statistically, I believe the average I was looking at Forbes or Business Insider, because this is in one of my presentations, I think according to one to those websites, it's about a total of $208,000 that the average person is going to pay for student loans for a four-year degree to make an average of 50 to 60 grand, maybe. But they go because they have to learn a skill set. Yet when it comes to entrepreneurship, people think, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do it myself, which makes no sense because entrepreneurship is seemingly a low barrier to entry with unlimited earning potential, yet people refuse to get help. And the, the, their egos get in the well, way. They don't refuse. They, they you, choose you, not to. Because you help a lot of them, don't you? I help a ton of them. A lot of people that, or a lot of people that I've helped have delayed asking for help until they realize they need it. For and me. They, and then they regret that. Yeah. Be, because every time it's like, I wish I would have done this sooner. So for me, uh, I look at it as objectively as possible. And I say, right away, I'm going to start a new endeavor. I'm going to get, I'm going to find the best coach I can. I'm going to invest money. Now I didn't always have money to invest. I used to be a middle school teacher. I bootstrapped my first business, which is why it took eight years to build. But when I became, got into real estate and I had some money, I invested in the best coaching I could right away. Which is and, smart to do. Yeah, it's absolutely smart because not only is coaching free, you get paid to do it. You get paid to do it. My first year of paying a high ticket real estate coach. Now I made about $127,000 in my rookie year of real estate. Just grit, grinding, brute strength, had no idea what I was doing, but I, I, I made about 127 grand. My second year, I invested in a high ticket coach. He was 1500 bucks a month. Now that number was the highest number I've ever heard for coaching, but I realized, hey, if I close one deal, I'll break even. Now I implemented what he taught me. I worked with him for a year. And over that year, I just, I mean, I really like three or four X my income to about $450,000 in GCI. Learning skills I didn't know how to do. I spent 18 grand in the year on coaching. So I spend 18, I make 450. And so was that a good ROI? Now, now, yeah. do, you, now do you think you would have if you didn't get his coaching? Absolutely not. No way. Well, because he's definitely worth it. Yeah, of course. And not only did I break even, I got paid to do it. And so the agents in my course, my real estate course, I told them, look, first of all, one deal is going to like three, four or five X times your investment. But also if you're not where you want to be, 
it's because you don't know how. It's simply because you don't know how. You need to learn the blueprint. And so the impossible to fail framework is about number one, you get the blueprint. And then number two, it's just teaching how to implement it. A lot of people that come into entrepreneurship, typically entrepreneurship is not most people's first career. Most people start in a salaried position, a nine to five J-O-B type thing, which is great. I did. And then they go into entrepreneurship. And a lot of people, when they're at their salaried position, are very successful when someone else is holding them accountable. (coughs) Yet, when they have to hold themselves accountable, they've never done that before. And then it becomes challenging. So I teach them basic skills of, of time blocking, of discipline, of accountability, of grit, of delayed gratification, realizing that it's not necessarily hard. It's just time consuming. And being an entrepreneur is a skill set. So you get the blueprint, you learn how to implement it. And if you do that for long enough, I believe it is literally impossible to fail. I would agree. So a lot of realtors that are failing, because what, 80% fail? Over 80% of agents will not make it to their first renewal within the first two years. Yeah, so eight, most of them basically. Yeah, yeah. And they're all quitting. We were talking about it earlier yep. because they're not making any money. That's I right. mean, at the end of the day, that's why they're quitting. Now, there might be some rules to that or exceptions. I'm sorry to that. Like, for example, you know, well, I didn't quit over money. I was doing good, but you know, my grandfather got sick and I had to care for him and mm. you know, yeah. Alabama, I sure. don't know, but there's gotta be some exceptions, but yeah. for the most part, they're quitting because they're not making any money yep. and they're not making any money because they don't know how to make the money. That's right. Because if they did know how to make the money, they probably would. They'd be making the money. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'd be, uh, uh, they'd decide not to be it because the work's too much. Right. So someone goes to a guy like you says, Hey, you know how to make money. Yep. You've made money. Yep. Now you're going to teach me to make money. Yep. How much does something like that cost them? So my course is called earth to orbit which anyone can check out at earth to orbit training.com. And I call it that because I believe launching a real estate career is like launching a rocket into space. It's the hardest, most challenging part. It requires a lot of energy and I believe it can only be done with great momentum. I've never met an agent and I don't think there's an agent out there that says, you know, I closed two to three deals a year. And then in year four, I closed 50. I think it takes a lot of momentum to build that foundation. But once you do it and you get into orbit, as I call it, I teach people how to build that relationship, that referral-based business, how to have a team. Again, I have three closings tomorrow. I'm not in town for any of them. Yeah, how to then, build a brand. Yeah, what's that? Do you, do you teach them how to build a brand? Absolutely. Because you're building a little bit of a brand for yourself. Absolutely. And, and so once you're in orbit and you've got those systems maintained, that's when you're achieving the quality of life that you envision for yourself. Most agents, when they become an agent, see another agent that's crushing it and they go, I want that. They're making it look easy. They have flexibility. They have control of their time. They're making awesome money. They drive a nice car. That's what I want. And you can get there, but you have to know how to do it. So if an agent comes to earth to orbit, it's a $3,000 per year course. Now, statistically, Agents that take my course are adding an average of $9,700 per month monthly in new commissions. So statistically, the average agent in my course is over three times their ROI in one transaction, which takes them just a couple months to do. So for the price of, you know, just a few thousand dollars, you're going to learn how to make literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have agents in my course that have tried other coaching programs that have quit that literally within the first six months have made over a hundred grand and have 150 grand in the pipeline. That's Matt Wright from Delaware. There's another guy who's a good friend of mine, Matt Solis in Dallas, Texas. Now, when he came to me, he was also a music teacher, just like I used to be. And he came to me like seven months ago when the school year started in September, he just got his license. He started earth to orbit from day one. Last week, he posted a picture on social media, fist pumping because he quit his teaching job because he's closed a ton of deals. He's into the six figures. And now he said, he told me, he actually sent me a text yesterday when I was on the plane on the way here. June is going to be a $50,000 month for him. Does that get you excited? Is that why you do it? That's exactly why I do it. I, you know, I was in a mastermind. I'm in an incredible uh, mastermind called the King's Brotherhood. It's a faith-based, all men's, high-performing entrepreneur mastermind. And at one of those Who masterminds- leads that thing? What's that? Who leads that? Uh, his name is Nicholas Barely. Yeah, based in Texas, good buddy of mine. And I almost went there, but I, I mean, I was. Yeah, it's that, an incredible group. We'd love to have you come I, check I, it out. I was barely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at one of those masterminds, I heard someone say, we find our purpose in life serving the person we used to be. 
I want to serve the agent I used to be. I didn't have a work ethic issue. I just had a, I don't know what to do issue. I had work, work isn't the issue. I'm ready to work hard. Tell me what to do. And as a teacher, I have a master's in education. I am a teacher at heart. And as a teacher, I love teaching people that want to learn. And when I know I've been able to make a positive impact on their life, that is when I feel closest to God. That is when I feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose. And so when I hear, or someone sends me a text or call and says, bro, I just quit my full-time job because you taught me how to do this. Or, or another agent says, I was on the verge of quitting and you've changed my life. Or another agent says, I never thought I was capable of this, but you showed me how to do it. That, I, I mean, there's literally nothing better than that. Well, that's a nice gesture or sentiment. Yeah. And, and the ability to, to make a living doing what I love um, as a result of working with you and, and the platform here to engage with my course has, has been, um, it, it, it's really just, it's incredible. Well, when it's all said and done, dude, that's going to be a very small part of it, I believe. Yeah. Um, because when someone, you know, again, it starts kind of with the, with the foundation, which should, yeah. should be a web-based on-demand course. Absolutely. Of some kind. Oh, Absolutely. And, and so, cause, cause again, I mean, you don't want to have to repeat yourself a thousand times, like let yeah. the system do all the repeating. Yeah. And then from there, they know if they like your stuff or not. Yep. And then from there, it's like, okay, how do I get more of Rob? Yeah. Well, that's not the VT. That's actually Rob. Right. So that costs a little bit more than the VT, right. doesn't yeah. it? But then that leads to investment groups, masterminds, yes. travel clubs. Yes. And collectively you're doing, you know, $50 million a year where this might just be the entry yeah. of the, of the whole ascension model that's right that's right it's just and the entry it's just the end i'm just building you a little yeah gate. <laughs> the foundation that's right yeah. and for real estate it's essential because one of the most common issues with with real estate is you know when you get your license you don't learn how to make money you get your license you pass the test you know zero about making money so you align with the brokerage and a lot of brokerages have great training the problem is it's broken up it's on different platforms it's not succinct it's good information Probably but no one's holding you accountable no one's holding you accountable it's good information with poor delivery because they don't have teaching experience. And also, you know, the, the supervising agent, the broker, whoever you're, I mean, 11 times out of 10, an agent tells me, I call the person that's supposed to help me, they never pick up. And I don't think an agent's progress should be hindered by someone else's lack of availability or someone else's lack of commitment to their success. So the beauty of this on-demand system in Earth to Orbit is that agents can log in 24 seven, anytime they want. Originally this course started because I run a, a team in Austin and I was still producing at the time, just like I am still. And I believe I, I'm always gonna keep producing cause I wanna keep my finger on the pulse of the market. So when I'm teaching agents, I can speak from experience, but I'd be working on something and an agent would call me and say, Rob, I got my first new construction appointment. How do I do new construction? I got to stop what I'm doing and train them on new construction. There's only so fast I can manually deliver information. Now with Earth to Orbit on, on this on-demand course, I can say, go watch the working with new construction lesson. There's a roadmap, there's, there's hours of video. By the end of that two hour lesson, you're gonna know exactly how to work new construction. Then let's have a five minute follow-up call or better yet, if you're in Earth to Orbit, come to one of the live group coaching calls that I offer every week and I'll answer your question. Boom, they have instant access to what they need. They are completely uninhibited from making as much progress as they want. The only thing I would change on that is don't say go watch the course say go take the course mm, yep because you watch videos yeah and you take courses yeah to me when someone says watch it it sounds very passive and when when i'm thinking watch it well watching it's not going to get me yeah trained yeah what's going to get me trained well watching it repeatedly first of all yeah but it's easier to say take and it sounds better so go take that course yeah as soon as you're done we can jump yeah. on a call that that's and by the way inside that course there should be something embedded that upsells the call yeah oh absolutely and that's another uh, that's great verbiage and you're right because one of the reasons when i actually built my course it was in another platform when i met you in nashville at that event I felt obligated to engage with Lightspeed and build more content because of the interactive nature of these on-demand videos. So the word take is actually quite appropriate because they are interactive and the agent is engaging. So thank you for that tip because that's, I mean, that one word is a game changer, right? And it, it, it does change the game. I got a few more, I'll show yeah. you. I, I just gotta hear <laughs> yeah. things and then I, cause I, I just what I used to do years ago. Now I haven't done that yeah. with clients in a long time. But what, we're, what we are gonna do is sit down and, and have a marketing discussion. Yeah. Because dude, you're gonna make, 
a lot of freaking people a lot of money yep. by disseminating this information. Yep. And there's people listening right now, I guarantee you're realtors, broke realtors. Yep. Driving around in their car looking for listings. Dude, yep. go to Earth, what is it, Earth to Orbit? Earth to Orbit Training.com. Yeah, go to Earth to Orbit Training.com, fill out the little thing and freaking get the blueprints. Let's go. You call them blueprints? I mean, I call Earth to Orbit the blueprint because with my educational experience combined with my real estate experience, it's literally the step-by-step -step blueprint. One of the biggest what, problems- What would someone be able to make if they took that course? Money-wise? Not watch the course, but took it. Well, again, taking it statistically from reported commissions from agents, within three months, they're adding an average of at least $9,700 per month in GCI. What's I GCI? Uh, gross commission income. I think you would have to try so they get really commission on that or that's their commission. That's the gross commission. So beyond that, it's whatever their brokerage is. If they're yeah. at hundred percent brokerage, they keep all of it. Most brokerages have a split and then a cap, but no, why, if you're a re agent, would you go work for a brokerage? Well, brokerages take on the liability for you. So liability for example, I run, I run a brokerage, right? Yeah, but liability of what? Uh, if an agent gets sued, the liability of training an agent, and every state is different. So for example, where I live in Texas, you have to be a licensed agent for four years to be a broker and be able to have agents work under you. Some states you can be a, uh, you can be, you know, independent right away. It really depends. But ultimately, typically when you're giving up part of your commission to the company you work for, it's not just liability. It's because they're offering you resources education, support. training, support. The problem is that most of them, I believe, don't offer as much value as they're taking money from you. So I talk to agents all the time that are like, I'm playing this fat, uh, flat fee brokerage, it's 100%, but I think I need to go somewhere else for support. And I tell them, you could stay at your 100% brokerage and just take my course. <laughs> That's gonna save you way more money, make you way more money. Um, but, but ultimately, it's because you're they're providing value, which is why you're giving them part of your commission. Mm. But see, it, like if I were going in the real estate game, I'd be like, I don't know, maybe I'm going to try it myself first. Or why wouldn't I just go get my brokerage license? I can't in some yeah. states. Uh, some states you can. So for example, again, in Texas, you can't be what's called independent in your own company. You have to have at least four years experience and then take the brokerage. So you have exam. to work as a brokerage. Uh, in some states you do. Yeah, in some states you do. But again, typically it's because agents don't know what they're doing. And this broker is saying, yeah, we're going to take your money, but we're going to offer you this training and this education. And when agents come to me and they say, well, my broker already offers me education, I say, cool, I'm not telling you don't take their education. I'm just telling you my education is one spot where you can get the answer to any question you would have. Take the course and launch your career. And again- Well, that's what's I, worth it. Because again, yeah. what I'm driving at is if you're gonna give a piece to somebody, yeah. they better be giving you the freaking know how to go get oh, the money. No doubt. no doubt. Like if I show you how to make a million dollars, you're not mad at giving me a little piece. But but yeah. if, but if I just, if I just uh, you, you get your license and you, you join my brokerage where now I'm gonna get a piece, yeah. but I don't help you. I don't talk to you. I don't freaking support you. I'm yeah. just, you just technically I get paid when you sell something. Yeah. I might throw a, hey, go sell something once in a while at right. you. But if I'm not supporting you, dude, yep. I wouldn't give commission to that person. Yep. Which I can't imagine. And again, that's why this course took two years and over $150,000 to produce and why in, I invested with your platform to launch it. Because when someone, as a teacher, when someone comes to me and says, Rob, help me, that is an honor and responsibility I take very, very seriously. I'm going to need to have you come help us make everyone's course uh, <laughs> you know, teacher worthy. Yeah, let's go. I mean, I mean, because there's some people in here, believe it or not, they they make courses that they're not teachers, but you know, the course works. So I don't right. know what the fundamental things are, but yeah, I, I mean, a lot of it need, is I know just we might need your yeah, ear. And, and I'd love to do that, but 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 ultimately, it's conveying information in a way that people can understand it. And all too often, especially in real estate, it's not uncommon to go to a real estate conference. You pay a lot of money. Someone hypes you up. You leave that conference, and you're like, yeah, let's go. But then the dust settles and you say, you know, I don't actually know how to apply any of what that person said. Like, yeah, I'm all about success, but I don't actually know what, like the actionable steps to go take. What do I physically need to do to reach that level of success? And that's what a good teacher does. And that's what my course does. It says, hey, these are literally the things you need to do. Like my daily checklist tells you literally, if you check every box every day, you're gonna be closing three, four, five deals a month. Do these things every day and you will never want for anything. Now, the question is you take my course to learn how to do those things at a high level. 
10 conversations a day, social media, at least one one-to-one every day. Great, do those things, but how do you do them at a high level? How are you gonna know what to say? Because you can have a buyer or seller consultation, but if you don't know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, how to handle objections, how to build relationship, how to build trust, you're not gonna get that deal. So many times agents say, do you provide leads? And I say, look, I could give you a thousand leads right now. You won't close one of them because you don't know how to convert. You need to, it's a, but, but that's why you take earth to orbit to learn how to do the things you learn what to do and how to do it to achieve the success that you desire. How many years were you selling before you started teaching? So I was selling for about three years before I started teaching. Um, again, as a teacher with a master's degree and over 20 years of experience, I mean, I have done mindset coaching and consulting with over 20,000 individuals over the course of my teaching career. And so the teaching skill set, I knew I had to get my skill set enough to the point that I felt comfortable teaching others and establishing that blueprint. So I started coaching one-to-one, then I started building a team. And then as I built my course and started doing more national speaking and national coaching, um, it, it's been about, so I, I sold for about three years and now, you know, hundreds and hundreds of agents around the country are achieving literal life-changing results with this blueprint. What's more fun for you? Teaching. Absolutely teaching. So so the real estate game is a little bit of a bear. Uh, I mean, it is a little bit, but again, I am implementing the same systems that I teach and I am what I would classify as in orbit, which is where I'm closing statistically, you know, five, six, seven deals per month. And I have a team in place that handles my business. So typically with the referrals, I mean, I've built a relationship and referral based business. I've never paid for a lead and earth to orbit teaches you how to generate well over six figures in commissions without ever paying for a lead. I've never paid for a lead. I don't think there's anything wrong with paid lead generation, but most people don't want to cold call and chase cold leads. They want to attract business. Why wouldn't they? Right? Why, why wouldn't they what? Want to attract business. Of course they do, right? But the thing is you have to learn how to prospect for referrals. Your phone isn't going to ring by itself. I teach them how to get their phone ringing, but the reality is it's better to establish relationships we're going to, which are going to pay exponential growth rather than chasing cold leads one at a time, one at a time. And so now I'm at the point where my real estate business is quite self-sustaining. I typically go on the first console. I take a call. I then assign that person. So for example, you know, I have uh, three closings tomorrow. Two of them are buyers. I went on that buyer consultation using my five-step but perfect buyer presentation, which I teach in the course, included with, with downloadable templates and the script for that, for that presentation. Then I bring one of my team members and I say, hey, Brian is going to be your showing agent. So right from the get-go, I establish I'm going to be overseeing this as a real estate agent, the most time-consuming part is showing properties. So I teach agents. It's very common for a student in Earth to Orbit within less than a year to say, I went from having all time and no clients to all clients and no time. How do I scale my income without scaling my time and getting burnt out. Well, you have a showing partner, transaction coordinator. Boom, super easy. Give an agent a part of the commission they're to called, show your properties. They're showing partners. Showing partner. Yeah, so for example, you know, unless it's a very, very, very close friend or personal referral, I haven't personally shown a property in about two years. You use showing partners. I use showing partners. Now, what happens if the showing partner gets so good at showing, they're like, why am I being a showing partner when I could be doing this my damn self? Well, then I, I'm good for them. I graduate them. Then you know, I get a new showing partner. Showing partners are typically agents in their first six to nine months that number one, they need to learn how to show property. They need to learn how to develop the skill set, how to build relationships, and they need some right now money. So it's really easy for them. Show it, you know, you're, uh, none of my showing partners have been in the business for like three, four, five years. The agents that come work for me that are- so It's almost like a training thing. It is a training thing. It's absolutely a training thing. Now they shadow me on showings first, so they know how to do it, or but they I mean, shadow another I mean, I'm agent. I'm always listening, like I'm a listener to where I'm thinking now, do I want to be, what if somebody out there wants to be your showing partner? Yeah. What phone do they blow up? Well, they can go to robstein.tv or send me an email at rob at robstein.com. If they live in the greater Austin area, I mean, that's a local thing for my, uh, my team and they can reach out or they can reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. Dude, bomb squad, go blow up his phone. Just so he knows, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> just so he knows how big the show actually is. Let's go. But um, but when you have the but I have those systems in place so I can keep selling real estate, build the active income in a way that's not super time consuming, and focus on coaching. Now, if I wasn't coaching, I would just have a relatively booming passive real estate business that would make me about half a million dollars a year, and I can spend time with my family, which is nice. That's that's why we do it. <laughs> so. You were in bodybuilding. 
Yes, sir. Like you said, professional bodybuilder, which means the veins and the freaking 3% body fat yep. stages, all that shit. All that stuff. Professional so, natural bodybuilding, meaning strictly drug tested, polygraph tested. Never did any peptides, nothing. Nope. Uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I was drug tested. I had to take a polygraph test. I had to take a P test. So um, if, you, if you were even on small doses of testosterone, would that be called juicing? Uh, I think that's up number one to interpretation. Like, but different natural federations do things differently. So for example, the natural federation I competed in, uh, even if you were on TRT, you were not considered natural. Some federations- Well, you wouldn't be, because natural, if you really want to tell the truth, natural is like you've done nothing, nothing, not even a fucking vitamin. To me, that's natural. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it, again, I mean, they all have their lists of things you're not allowed to take and all that. Some federations do allow medically prescribed testosterone. Um, I never got into steroids because number, uh, it's just, you're I think smarter it's, than that. Yeah, I mean, it's just damaging. It, it's it just, dam damaging. it's just damaging. Um, and I, you know, TRT is not TRT is not if you do it right. Of course it's not. Um, but I'm and, on that shit now. Come on, let's go. I'm done. Right, let's go. I'm done. I'm yeah. going to be fucking 20 years forever now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, bodybuilding, I think a lot of bodybuilders go into entrepreneurship because there's a lot of similarity. It takes discipline. It takes delayed gratification. It takes an incredible mindset. I mean, I was bringing coolers of cold chicken and broccoli to weddings going to shows. You know what I mean? So it's like having that discipline and that grit to get through it really lended itself. I did bodybuilding before I got into real estate. And so I think what that- What got you into that though? Into bodybuilding? Woo. Uh, I used, so I used to be quite big. Um, at, so, so if you can't tell on camera, I'm a short dude, I'm 5'4", right? I got to over 200 pounds. None Dang. of it was muscle. Not a good look to be bald, short, and fat. <laughs> Not a good look. Um, and so I, I struggled and I was trying to figure out what to do. I tried running. I tried like- a bunch of stuff that didn't work. And eventually I found the P90X program, Tony Horton, right? Revolutionized home fitness. And I did it for 90 days. I got some results at the end that were okay. I couldn't, I couldn't lift my feet off the ground for a pull-up. I could only do six or seven push-ups. Um, but at the end of the 90 days, I had some results. I had like a little outline of the abs, right? But I didn't have that after picture. And I was like, what's going on? I, I want the commercial quality results. But I also realized I didn't commit to nutrition. I didn't commit to nutrition. I did it for a second 90 days and said, I'm going to commit to nutrition. They give you this little nutrition book. At the end of that second round of 90 days, that's when I had the beach body, the little abs and all that stuff. And, and it's I realized all nutrition. it's all nutrition. Uh, I usually say the body you build is in the gym, but the body you reveal and see is made in the kitchen. People are like, how you get them abs? Abs are made in the kitchen. It's all about nutrition. And when people say, is it a hundred, what's the ratio training to nutrition? Is it 80, 20? It's a, it's a hundred, a hundred, right? It, it, now that doesn't mean you got to starve yourself, but realistically having an aesthetically pleasing like bodybuilder type um, physique means you have a low enough body fat percentage that you can see what's going on. And abs, like lower abs, lower back, uh, that's where most of our vital organs are. So that's why people are always amazed how low body fat you need, typically between eight and 10% to have a defined, um, to have a defined six pack. And that really just takes the consistency. I remember at one time I was in the gym. And diet though. Uh, consistency and diet and training. Yeah, I remember one time I was in the gym, it was close to, I was close to being out of a show and maybe two or three weeks out. So I was very, very lean, probably six to 5% body fat. Now, when you're competing, typically the better you look, the worse you feel. Your hormones are whacked out. Um, you know, you, you're, you're, you're almost getting like this depression funk. You have no energy because your body thinks you're starving. And some dude came up to me in the gym as I'm changing. He said, bro, how do you get those abs? And I was like, I didn't feel like that. That's a long question. That's a long answer. I was like, eh, you know, just the, whatever. He was like, it's like dieting and salad and stuff and running. I'm like, yeah, same thing. Sure. He says, man, I'm doing what you're doing. It's just not working. And I was like, how long have you been doing it? He says, 11 days. <laughs> right? I mean, it takes months, you know, months and months and months. And so the thing is when you're dieting, same thing with entrepreneurship, when you're building something you're obsessed about, whether it's your physique or your business, you're thinking about it all the time. 
And so when you do something for a month or two, it's mentally exhausting and it feels like you've been putting so much effort towards it. And you have, it just takes longer. It just takes longer than most people think building a real estate career, building a business, building a physique. But again, if you got the blueprint with massive action, consistency, and time, that's again, when it comes back to, it's impossible to fail. Mm. It's damn good. Damn good. (laughs) Folks, I think we're going to see big things out of Mr. Rob Stein. So what would you tell the bomb squad if you could tell them anything at all? You can achieve anything you want. When you see someone that might be achieving something, it's not uncommon to say they must be blessed with some X factor that I don't have. They have something. I live with that, that constantly. Right? Yeah. That, that, I, that I don't. They got it. I don't. They're destined for that. I'm destined for this. That is not true. We all have the divine in us. God has blessed us beyond belief. And if you seek him out and you seek out your purpose and the right education, you are capable of anything. Look at it this way. How far are you from your goal? Think of it as a finish line. I'm here. What I want is here. The further you are, I'm going to be real and transparent with you. It's going to take time. It took me a long time to go from an underpaid, overworked middle school teacher to a uh, fat middle r- 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 right? Fat middle right? school teacher, right? Were you to, fat? Yeah, I was. To, to everything. So, like, if someone saw you in the past, you're you're broke because if you're a teacher, you're broke. No one does it for the money. Yep. You're fat. Yep. You look like a little freaking fat dude. I was, yeah. And you're running around as a middle school teacher. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, you look at him. He's all buff. Making money in real estate, teaching people how to make money in real estate, speaking on stages, writing books. Yeah. What do you think caused that transition the most? Uh, again, being being blessed with the right opportunities and taking advantage of them. I think God gives us a lot of opportunities. I think a lot of people don't take advantage of them. Yeah. And you know, you, you you know what I also believe in about that? Hmm. I believe that. God weeds out the undeserving by making it a little more difficult. It is. So anytime something's difficult for people, I tell them to smile and and, and be yeah. happy about it because that's just God seeing if you deserve it. And how are you answering him yeah. or her? Right. Well, it's her now. <laughs> Whatever. I'm talking about, you know, how, how are you responding to that? Oh, well, that's bullshit. And you walk away pissed or do you, do you say, wow, well, I'll take this as a challenge. Yeah. Because if you can just shift your mindset to realize anything difficult is just a challenge to see if you're worth the big yes. picture. Yeah. So and, then and, you dig. Yeah. And, and you dig and, and, and you're willing to commit to what you want unrelentingly. Right before I came here, I was reading um, the book of James, which I really, really love. It's, and, and that's really about obedience and that obedience is rewarded. Now, whether you believe in God or not, I think the principles are the same. Personally, I, I, I know God is real and he has blessed me and I'm beyond grateful for that every single day in business and life with my incredible family, right? With my wife and my baby. Like I thank God every day, all day for the blessings I have and for the opportunities he's given me, whether you believe in God or not, obedience is rewarded. In James, it talks about the fact that God tests us and those who are obedient are rewarded. Think of it this way, like being a parent for any parents listening to this, you're a parent. I think the relationship of obedience and God, whether you believe in it or not, is really, really good, right? So if your kid asks you something in a rebellious way, dad, I want a car. I'm old enough to have a car. I want a car. And they ask you like that. And you're like, you got to wait for it. And they're like, fine. You're going to be like, dude, I'm not going to give you what you want, right? But if you show gratitude and grace and hard work for a long period of time, you will get rewarded. Entrepreneurship, life, real estate, physique, whatever, anything that is substantial takes time and it takes sacrifice. In my book, I talk about the four fears, fear of judgment, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of sacrifice. Fear of sacrifice is one of those things that people Fear sacrificing what it takes to get what they want. If I, for me to go from a fat middle school teacher to a, a buff real estate dude, right? That took a long time, but I, I, but it was absolutely worth it. So ultimately, you asked, what would I tell people? I would say, number one, whether you believe in God or not, get to know God. Because when I got to know God, my life exponentially changed in ways I couldn't have even imagined. It was already good, and it went to like new dimension 
Un- unbelievably fantastic with blessings on blessings I couldn't have even imagined. Number two, I would say whether or not you believe in God, it's about understanding that anyone can do anything they want. Seek out the right education. Surround yourself with the right community. If you're in a community of naysayers and negativity and negative Nancys, those are not the people to ask advice from. Go seek out people that have achieved what you want because those are the people that will believe in you, that will show you how to get there. And again, if you're willing to implement the right education with massive action, relentless consistency, and time, it is impossible to fail. And I am here to help you. Whether or not you're in real estate, I do mindset coaching. Reach out to me at robertrobstein.com. Go to me on Instagram, go to robstein.tv, send me a message and let me know how I can help you. If you're willing to do the work, you can have anything you want and God will reward your obedience. Amen. Amen. Can't even put a cap on that. So until next time, kids, keep it real. Dude, this is a fucking close school live call. You don't got to get in a suit for this, but if you were going to sell something, if you wanted to sell me something, you got 15 minutes of my time and you're prospectively going to come in and sell my business, your goods and services. And you didn't fucking consciously think to yourself, how do I look? Is this the best I can look? That's the lesson. Is this the best I can look? Because that's what, that's what you should be thinking when you look in the mirror every single day.